I'm sure you've been in this situation before where you're jamming around in one of your favorite keys and you accidentally stumble across a melody that you really dig. But just having a great sounding melody isn't enough. If you don't have the perfect chord progression behind it, your music's going to be as unappealing as a Yoko Ono karaoke marathon. And that's what we're here to talk about today. I'm Uncle Ben, and this is why you suck at guitar. Chords and melodies have a somewhat symbiotic connection, and the musicians that understand the connections between the two the best are the ones that put out the most melodic content. Guitar players like David Gilmour understand the relationship between scales and chords incredibly well, and that's why everything they play sounds so damn melodic and singable. But you don't have to be a master musician like Dave in order to understand how this stuff works and start applying it into your own playing. You don't even really have to know all that much theory, honestly. You just have to understand one simple idea and you can start writing beautiful chord progressions to go through melodies today. As always, this video is brought to you guys by everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Sign up today, even for just a buck a month, you're gonna get access to all kinds of downloadable tabs, backing tracks, bonus lessons, and so much more. So don't delay, sign up today. Gear-wise, for today's video, I'm playing my beloved Ernie Ball Luke 3 here into the front of this Dietzel VH2 that I just got from Sweetwater. This was actually one of the demo models that they had for sale, so it saved several hundred bucks. And as near as I can tell, it's brand new. There's not a scratch on it. So next time you're shopping for a nice piece of gear for yourself over there on Sweetwater, be sure to check out those demo deals and save some money. One thing I want to emphasize here is that everything I'm going to tell you in this video is merely a suggestion of things that tend to work. But there's about a billion examples of people completely breaking all of these rules and making amazing sounds too. Just remember the golden rule. If your ears tell you that it sounds cool, then it is cool and go with it. Generally speaking, what our ears crave is to hear agreement between the chord that's being played and the melody that's being played over it. For example, if your melody strongly features a D note, it's gonna sound its best if it's being played over a chord that contains a D, like a D major, or maybe even a G major, or perhaps even a B minor. That note's gonna sound really good against all those chords because it's a part of those chords. Now, you don't have to know a ton of theory in order to make this stuff work for you, but here's kind of the quickest way to understand all this stuff in a nutshell. Okay, a key is based on whatever scale you're using, right? In today's example, I'm using the B minor scale, which is formed of these notes. B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, and A. Every one of those notes forms its own chord. And those chords that form are the ones that are available to us in that key. Now a lot of guitar players stop right there and they say, well, if I'm playing in key, that's good enough. So what I'll do is I'll take a look at all the chords that are available in this key and just kind of noodle around until I find ones that sound cool against my melody that I came up with. Whenever you do it that way, you're going to end up finding some that just randomly sound great and other ones that sound terrible. And if you don't know why, this can really slow down your creative process. Here's what it would sound like. Nothing that you just heard was out of key at all, but what made some of it sound good and other parts sound terrible? It's actually a really easy answer. The chords that you heard that sounded good contained the melody note. The chords that you heard that sounded off didn't contain the melody note. That's it. I'm gonna say like 95% of the time when you hear a guitar player playing a note or a singer singing a note and it just sounds so damn perfect to our ears, it's because they're singing something that's already there in the chord that is being played over. And if we carefully choose our chords to suit the melody, that's gonna happen for us too. To make this all easier to follow along with, down here at the bottom of the screen, I've made a chart of the seven basic chords that are available to us from the B minor scale. If you wanna know a really easy trick to figure out what chords are available to you in any key, 
be sure to watch this video right here on my channel. It's going to be a huge help for you. That melody that I played earlier is really simple and emphasizes a couple of notes of the scale. F sharp, E, D, and C sharp for the first run. And then we do F sharp, E, D, and B. If we want to make that melody sound as strong as possible, we need to choose chords down here from our chord bank that feature them. So like for example, whenever I play that first phrase and it lands very strongly on that F sharp note, I need to choose one of these chords that features an F sharp. For example, the F sharp minor. Very strong connection there. You'll notice the B minor chord also features that F sharp note. Another one that uses the F sharp note is our D. Any of those three chords is gonna sound great against that F sharp note because they have the F sharp note in them. Now, if you were to play one of the other chords here that's in key but doesn't feature the F sharp note, that's what makes it sound kind of bad. Like for example, if I played the, uh, the A chord, right? Well, it's in key, but it doesn't feature the F sharp note. There's just not really that same strong connection that you get when you hear a chord that already features that note. Let's make a really nice Pink Floyd, David Gilmour sounding progression based around this idea. Here's how it's gonna sound. Sounded pretty dang nice, right? And again, for the F sharp note that was emphasized, I was playing B minor, because it has that note in it. The next part emphasized the E note, so I went with my A chord. For the part of the melody that emphasized D, I played my G chord, because there's a D note right there inside of it. But here's the cool thing. You could choose a completely different set of chords and it would make that melody sound way different. With the B minor kind of thing that I did back there, again, it gave it that very like sad, depressing, Pink Floyd sort of tone. But if I chose some other chords that emphasize those melody notes, I could make that melody sound completely different. For example, the first note of the melody, the F sharp note, is found in my D major chord. The E note is found in my A. The D note here I could put in my G chord. And then for the last part of the melody to emphasize that C sharp note, I'll put that in my A major chord. Now listen to how much different that melody is gonna sound just by changing the chords underneath it. Completely different, right? That's more of that hands in the air, Sunday morning, Hillsong music kind of sound that isn't exactly my favorite. I'm probably gonna wake up tomorrow now with like a copyright strike against this video from Hillsong. Those bastards. And again, there's no mystery to how this works. Every one of those chords that I chose just emphasized the main note of the melody. Now when I use that phrase, the main note of the melody, that can be a little deceptive and even subjective at times. Generally speaking, it's the first really prominently featured note that we hear against a chord. That is what our ear is perceiving as like home base. So it needs to agree with the chord as soon as we hear it. I call this the tonal handshake, where the chord and the melody really need to shake hands. And then the musical conversation can begin from there. Yeah, whenever you're choosing those chords, I want you to look out for cool sounding things going on in the bass notes. So for example, uh, with that first part of the melody there that emphasizes F sharp, E, D, C sharp, I could find a set of chords that has a bass line that just walks down. The F sharp notes in our B minor, the E notes in our A, the D note is in our G, and then that C sharp note is in the F sharp minor chord. That'll sound pretty cool. Let's check that out. I 
get a really strong sound with that walk down going through the scale like that. But this brings us up to another interesting possibility that you can play around with. So they're at the very end of that first section of melody. It just sits there on that C sharp note, right? It's not playing any other stuff from the scale. It's just that one note kind of sitting there sustaining. We played our F sharp minor chord against it because it's a part of it. But when there's no other harmonic information flying around in the melody, that gives us an opportunity to get a little frisky with the harmony and try out some new stuff with the chords. Check this out. So C sharp is the main melody note, right? And that's in our F sharp minor chord, which is in key. But that note is also a part of a F sharp dominant chord. Now that's not in key exactly. It uses a, uh, a sharp note. That's not in key at all. But it sounds really cool against that melody. And again, because the melody's not moving around, there's nothing telling us we can't use that chord, right? That F-sharp 7 chord in there makes my big toe shoot up in my boot. It's like a nice little surprise that you weren't expecting because it's not in key, but it still features that melody note, so our ears accept it as sounding cool. It's pretty neat stuff, right? Okay, so everything that I've been showing you in theory terms, what we've been doing is making sure that the melody note is either the root, the third, or flat third, or fifth of whatever chord is being played. Again, we're just finding it as part of one of these chords down here, right? Um, but that's not the end of the road. Thankfully, a lot of music would be boring if those were the only options, right? You can go beyond this and start getting really creative and getting, you know, more interesting kind of jazzy sounds if you mess around with some ideas that expand outside of that. So, for example, uh, first melody, F sharp, right? Again, the question you gotta ask yourself is what chord is that the root of? F sharp minor. What chord is that the third of? D major. What chord is that the fifth of? B minor. But then you can go beyond that and get a little bit more expensive with your chord types. What is that the seven of? Okay, it's not on the sheet or anything right here, but it's the seventh of a G major seven. So you could have that melody note, that F sharp note, as part of this chord, and it'll sound really interesting. Let's try something out right here, because the next part, emphasizes E, it's part of our A chord. Emphasizes D note, that's also part of G major seven. And then C sharp is the emphasis, that can be in our A as well. So we can simply play against this progression with two chords. Da, 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 da. And that's a really cool sound. And then at the end of it, whenever it lands on that B, Maybe we play G major seven again, because it's part of it, or we go to that B minor sound. Check this out, it's gonna sound really nice. It kind of has more of that droney post-rock kind of sound that I really think is cool. Somebody's gonna ask about what that chord was. That's a B minor nine. Again, I can get away with that because it features the melody note B in there. Which sounds a little bit more sadder. Make sure the melody note is in the chord. That is all you have to worry about. This is the real secret to making your stuff sound ultra melodic every single time. And if you understand this process, you can also work this in reverse, where maybe you come up with a chord progression that you really like, but you can't think of a melody. Well, try to make the melody play notes that are right there inside of the chords that you're already playing. I wanna give you another example of how powerful choosing the right chords behind a melody can be too, by taking a melody that we all know that is also old as hell and copyright free, so I can use it, uh, but I'm gonna put a different set of chords behind it and it'll really change how it sounds. Let's use Amazing Grace, right? We're gonna play it in the key of G. It sounds like this.
Now the chords that go behind that typically sound like this. Right? Um, and it's all really logical stuff. G is the first main note, put it behind a G chord. B, G, B, that's also in a G chord. The G note is part of your C chord. The D note is part of your G chord. All makes sense. But there's other options out there that would sound really cool too. Check this out. That first note of the melody is G, right? G is part of an E minor chord. So is the next melody note. B, that's also part of an E minor chord. Next part emphasizes the G note. Let's put it in the C chord. Then we emphasize the D note. Let's put it in the D chord. Check this out. Sounds a whole lot different, right? But your ears still read it as sounding good because the melody is fitting right there inside of the chords. This is a really cool songwriting trick too because it lets you get double the mileage out of everything you write. If you have a melody that sounds really cool in the verse, then put a different set of chords behind it in the bridge and suddenly it's gonna sound totally different. And again, you don't have to be some kind of musical genius to make this work. Just make sure that the chords and the melody are shaking hands and agreeing the entire time and you're gonna be good to go. So there you go guys, everything that you need to know about writing great chord progressions for your melodies. Hopefully that gives you some ideas and you guys can start turning out some beautiful music today. Thanks so much for liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Be sure to ring the bell down there for notifications every time I upload a new slice of fried gold. And if you like what you've seen and want to help support the channel and get access to a ton of awesome bonus stuff, be sure to sign up today to that Patreon page over at patreon.com slash Guitars. Well guys, it's been fun as always, but it's time for you all to get off of here and start writing some amazing music. Less clicking, more picking.